if you put enough pressure on somebody, the guy want to go home. He said, hey man, let me tell you something about the guys down there off of Wabash. So tell me something. He says, hey, they, they putting a lot of the murders that are occurring there, they, they, they crackheads. I said, what? He said, they putting life insurance policies on drug addicts. And kill them. Yeah, and kill them. Now what? Okay, so what area are we about to drive down? This is an old part of town. Um, we're gonna go down Buchanan and... Wabash and Buchanan, 14th, 16th, all the way up to 23rd Street. And no farther than that. there was a uh, family that you knew from growing up that then uh, during your time uh, on the gang squad and Project Red Rum, so kind of talk about Red Rum and then Project Destiny and the Johnson family and the strange and dark crimes you uncovered. Okay, well, uh, in that area, of course, uh, the, the Johnson family was five brothers. Uh, I think three of them uh, now are deceased. Uh, Roosevelt was the oldest boy. Uh, Keith Johnson, notorious Keith Johnson. Uh, Would they have been your age or a little old? No, no, they're my parents' age. Oh, so they're about 60, uh, 60 plus. Okay. Yeah, 60 plus. So in 2000, they were in their f the early 40s, 40s, 40s mid 40s, 40s or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, like I said, five brothers uh, Roosevelt, from what I can remember, Roosevelt, Keith, uh, Keith was the ringleader, uh, Carlos, Wimp, and uh, I think uh, Gabe, if I'm not mistaken. But they've, yeah, they've been a family that was been in drugs since the 70s. And that, it's a long ass run. that neighborhood, uh, you know, when I used to look at the crime statistics in any given year, that third precinct, and even, even when I was messing around in the mid 90s, like that was really active and wild. A lot of uh, a lot of corruption, too. Uh, it's pretty there, totally it's, burned out now. Right, right. And it's, it's, it's been uh, kind of uh, the, uh, the houses are torn down now, of course, and uh, there have been new construction now. And I'll take you down there uh, yeah. in a second. But, uh, you know, sometimes, man, when generally when there's an area of, of high narcotic distribution, then you're going to have, uh, that's going to breed corruption. So what, um, can you take us, tell, tell us about Project Red Rum and then how that, or Red Rum, Operation Red Rum, and then how that led to Project Destiny and the Keep John. Okay, Red Rum was a, it was comprised of uh, some of your elite officers in homicide, armed robbery, uh, carjacking, uh, body crime ta task force. That's incorporated to one specialized unit with the aid of uh, FBI, Michigan State Police, and maybe DEA. Hell of a unit, though. Hell of a unit. Ah, uh, that's pretty, I mean, th those type of units are, they're always set up in Detroit because there's so much violent crime, but they don't even exist often in other cities. No. You have to have a lot of serious crime. Hey, listen here. Um, the statistics shows, and not to glorify any of this, Al, but the statistics, we're number four as the most dangerous. In a lot of years, is number one. Yes, right. You know, just to, just to be just to be correct, New York, with 12 million people, doesn't have the high crime as Detroit. Yeah, there's as many murders here. Is there is in New York? Absolutely. Now, him, so. And what, tw yeah, 12 times the people. You know, it's, 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 it's New Jack, New Jack gangsters and New Jack cops. That's how we. So Red Rum was set up to go after high profile crimes uh, or drug crimes? Dr drug crimes. So how did the Johnson family get on your radar? And did you know them from growing up? I knew they, they knew my family, but I knew their reputation. You know, it's it's a bunch of them motherfuckers, you know. So, uh, now I think it's I think the nephews are the, uh, um, are still circulating uh, right now. But uh, getting back to uh, Red Rum, uh, there was a young girl named Destiny that was firebombed. Her house was firebombed. And it's and it's like Buchanan and yeah, so, yeah, this Johnson family uh, they're from Wabash and Buchanan. Okay, and they controlled uh, 14th all the way to May 28th. And this would have been from the 70s? Yes. So there was a fire bombing and a, like how old was Destiny? I want to say under seven years old. And so even, well, 
So that that happened to bring out some attention. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it was a public outcry. Um, I mean, you know, in the nation, anytime a child gets killed like that. Well, that's not true because a lot of children get killed and there is no outcry. It's kind of random. Yeah, there wasn't no yeah. outcry with mine. But it, that, so I agree. Around. I agree. I agree. You know, it, it, it's also been rumored that uh, that the Johnson family was known to to put life insurance policies on uh, drug addicts. How, what's the mechanism of how it works that you finally crack down on the Johnson family? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, of, of course, it's uh, informants. And once again, by it being a child, for one, and also to and the street hustlers got to understand this. Once you start killing people, we're going to investigate a murder. Seriously. And this is a child that the house was fired on. And it got, probably caught the attention of a, of a politician. But I know one thing. They, they worked the shit out that case, man. Uh, and a lot of people went to jail. I think, I, I believe Keith Johnson was the, um, he was number one underneath that old indictment. And that's what really started it. And did he he killed himself? Yeah. How did that happen? Uh, from from what I hear, that uh, he he also turned informant. Ooh. Again, Sue, uh, just to, oh, hey, well, everybody. I think there was a I think there was a murder that happened in Rufford, and it was uh, involving a, a a couple, I think a married couple, and Keith mm-hmm. Johnson had something to do with it. Oh wow! So as part of his drug or just. I think it was the drugs had something to do with. Uh, when, when, what percentage of people tell? A lawyer told me everybody tells. Your experience, your your own mother would tell. It really depends on. Well, oh, your supervisors come in and put pressure on you. Right, yeah, they, and, and back back then I was working narcotics slash gang squad organized crime, so. I worked outside of Red Room. It was their case. to tell me something. He says, 8-8, eight, eight, they putting a lot of the murders that's occurring and they, they, they crack heads. I said, why? He said, they they're putting life insurance policies on drug addicts. And kill them. Yeah, and kill them. Now, what? Allegedly, they were doing maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars 30000 a day at one time. Some heroin, pills, Oh, you said what? Every drug? Every drug, you know, at inside this building. You know, you could, I mean, you could cop and get all kind of barriers of drugs in. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so marijuana, any, anything? Yeah, anything. So people, when they separate... Uh, suburban nights come down here, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's where the money comes from. And people think you can separate marijuana from other drugs, but they were always all sold oh, together. Yeah, yeah all, all, all the time, all the time. And we had, we had a street enforcement team that would come out and... Uh, they would do surveillance and we'd see the customers come in. And also, too, we would later run a source. A source would come in that's working with the police and purchase drugs. Or often we would do it ourselves. We would kind of get, you know, kind of camouflage ourselves and walk in and whatever the drug of choice was, we would do it. And later, and later on, we'd get a warrant and, and raid. But we never could really catch them. So you could never get to John. So you, you were on to the Johnsons before... Project Destiny. So, yes, yes. So you start, so tell us the exact way that it works when, so now there's this high profile case and you said, the, the, the supervisor said, shut them down, kicking doors. We were, we, we were, uh, it was 13 crews down at Narcotics Stand, 13 crews with seven people. So seven times 13. Oh, wow. So a bunch of hundred and some we, people. We constantly proactive patrol. We were raiding every night. Uh, the 30 series booster cars were out here shaking, baking, shaking people down. And eventually, of course, the Johnsons, the Johnsons, the Johnsons, the Johnsons, the Johnsons family always, always come up. 
quite a few guns too. So you, you Keith got brought in for questioning. Uh, he he was he was known for having people killed. He didn't necessarily do it. And and tell us about so how how did you start hearing about well you started hearing about that he was putting insurance piles. Yes. So tell us about that. That's up. Uh, you know I, I I would sometimes go go to different precincts and and, and do interviews. Something simple. Somebody a guy locked up for traffic warrants. This is that. This is how easy this shit is. You go in there and the guy is then there for traffic warrants or driving while impaired or anything, anything. And tell me a story. But of course we have to do something for him. The thing is, is that what pressure someone had to put on you in order for you to crack? It could be you love something in life. Could be heroin. Yeah. It could be anything. If you put enough pressure on somebody, the guy want to go home. He said, hey man, let me tell you something about the guys down there off of Wabag. I said, tell me something. He says, hey, they, they putting a lot of the murders occurring that they, they, they crack heads. I said, what? He said, they putting life insurance policies on drug addicts. You kill them. Yeah, and kill them. Now, what person in society are less that's who serial killers choose. How many people did you have a sense of, did, did you ever really unravel? Was that true or he killed himself it before? It never, it never, I never, I wasn't in homicide, but uh, I'm quite sure I retired probably could, could be the Red Rum guys. Could, 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 or did the and that's how they indicted him, through the murders. Oh, they did indict him. Yeah. But, oh, they did. Yeah. But, but then he killed himself before it he really. He killed himself with a shotgun and that's gruesome. Where was that at? Around here? Or you don't know? I'm not for sure exactly where that was. So he, he did kill himself with shot. Wow. And how old was he? He was in the 60s? 60s. Or no, he would have been in the 60s yeah. now. He was in but, his probably uh, mid-40s. Yeah. Uh, I think this 50. last last 10 years. With that oh, last 10 years. Oh, he didn't get indicted in 2000. When right. was when did when was the Project Destiny situation? That was in uh, in the uh, 2000s. Like the early 2000s. Okay, but then you're saying he didn't kill himself like till 10 years ago? He didn't kill himself right then. He killed himself later on. Oh, so he did. He, he, oh, he didn't get, he stayed out of prison. He was going back to prison because they were investigating the murders. Oh, so it was taking years. Yes, yeah, yeah, to, to, to put it all together. So he was getting ready to go to prison for the rest of his life. And he killed himself. What do you think that?